Oh, um, well, I'm, I, I like every kind of music. I, I really hear something that's good, you know. Um, I guess it just depends on how you get turned on to things. I mean, I went to University of Miami, uh, had a scholarship there, and uh, I got lucky. You know, I had a scholarship. I never, I couldn't read music. I didn't know anything about jazz, but uh, I just try to keep an open mind and listen to the best of every, you know, every genre has something really good and something really bad. Uh, if you talk to someone and you go, do you like jazz? And they go, oh, I can't stand Lawrence Welk. You know, well, maybe that's not the right jazz for them to listen to. So you have to really, you have to in investigate, really search out, you know, what's the best bluegrass? You know, what's the best country? What's the best uh, different types of jazz and things like that? So I just keep an open mind. I don't, I don't really hate anything. The only thing I hate is something that's uh, just out there to be commercial and, you know, there's really no musical, or, you know, it's all programmed or something or lip syncing, stuff like that. So I just try to keep an open mind, and I, and I work on all the different grooves and different things, and uh, you know, be able to read music. Very, very, very important. I haven't talked to anyone yet that said, uh, you know, I, I really, I hate, I hate the fact that I read music. It's, it's ruined my style. I've never heard that from anyone. Uh, I, I think it's just a communication thing, and you get to read more music and to, and to be able to take last-minute gigs, like I took Frank's gig. If you can't read music, you're not gonna be able to do those things. There's plenty of great musicians that don't read music. You know, I don't think the Beatles read music and they were great, writing great stuff, but I think it just adds, um, it helps you assimilate more things quicker. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> That's a great question, actually. Um, I think I make them sound really good. I compliment them. I think that's the main thing. I mean, you can take a great bass solo and that's great, but if you take a great bass solo and then Billy Cobham takes a, a drum solo and you're getting lost when he's taking his drum solo, he could care less whether you take a good ba you know, bass solo. So I've always tried to approach it like uh, the greatest compliment to me is if somebody leaves the stage and says, man, that's the best I've played in years. That means that I've made them perfectly comfortable. And it doesn't matter if they're a good player or a bad player. If it's a trumpet player <clears throat> that's uh, flat all the time, I want to make him sound like he's in tune. If someone is having a hard time on the drums, uh, I want to make him sound like they're they're a great drummer. You know, that's that's my role. Uh, you can't only you know only be happy when everyone is at your level, or you know you're always going to find situations where people are above your level, and and below your level. So you know you have to take both situations and uh, make them comfortable. I think that's why I, I work with these people because uh, at the end of the day. I make them sound good and comfortable, and that's why I get called back. That's really the only reason, I think. Oh, wow. <clears throat> it's a long list, very long list. Um, uh, I'll, just, I'll just give you, I mean, I listen to everything, but um, as far as bass players, uh, I was kind of weaned on rock. I really like, uh, you know, John Entwistle, John Paul Jones, Chris Squire. Those three guys <clears throat> had completely different styles, completely different sounds, and uh, approached things differently. So it kind of uh, it gave me the bug to like find my own thing, you know, not to copy those guys. Try to come up with something that's your own thing, and I think that's important. Uh, but as far as like right now, who inspires me the most? Um, uh, usually sax players and guitar players and piano players, uh, you know, Michael Brecker and, you know, Bill Evans, of course, um, you know, Chick, and, and not just people that I work with. I mean, just, you know, Charlie Park, all that stuff is like ridiculous. And, and uh, that, you know, to play that on the bass is, uh, it's hard. It's hard to do. So that, that's kind of, uh, you know, I look for them for inspiration, John Coltrane and, you know, Jerry Bergonzi and stuff like that. Well, you know, I'm always working on something, so unfortunately I have to listen to my own stuff. Uh, so I, I do do that, but I listen to, uh, you know, it's funny, I'll, I'll just tell you what's in my CD player right now. Uh, I picked up uh, Switched On Bach, which I haven't heard in a long time, which was, uh, you know, uh, Walter Carlos, Wendy Carlos now. And he did all the Bach uh, pieces on synthesizer. It was the first, I think it was done in 66 or 67. And I took the synthesizer and made it this weird avant-garde thing and made it like a real instrument. And, um, and, I, and that's a beautiful performance and you really get into the Bach, you know, the Bach writing is, is fantastic. I mean, that's the basis of everything.
that's uh, in tertian in my in my opinion. So I listen to that. I listen to uh, Klaus Ogerman. I love that stuff. Uh, there's certain records I, I used to listen to like for a whole year. I remember listening to uh, you know Miles Smiles for a whole year. I mean every single day I listen to that record. Uh, my funny Valentine Miles Davis listened to that for a whole year. UK, that was a great record with uh, Alan Holsworth and Bill Burford and. Uh, uh, everything, yeah, I kind of, uh, you know, it's weird. I, I listen to something and I get addicted to it. You know, I listen to it like every single day. I can't put it down. Uh, there's a lot of stuff like that. You know, Steps Ahead Live in Japan, that's that's a great record. And, um, yeah, I'm just looking for that passion in the music. And it could be in anything. It could be in Johnny Cash record, you know. I listen to Johnny Cash once in a while. So I think it's just uh, keep an open mind, you know. Uh, I'm finishing a record. It'll be mixed by October 10th. That'll be really great. Um, uh, TJ Helmerich uh, and Brett Garson put a record out. Uh, it's coming out really soon, and that's uh, a good thing. As far as activities, uh, Bill Evans, I'm touring with him again uh, starting in October for five weeks in Europe. Um, I'm playing with Frank and Bali uh, over the next couple weeks here in L.A. Um, <clears throat> I think that's it. I mean, I have things in the future, but we'll see if they pan out. <laughs>